Residential Construction from the Inside Out, an informative seminar designed specifically for the insurance professional. Foundations and Slabs Once a site has been prepared, the next step in the process is the construction of the slab on grade and foundation system. First, trenches are excavated for any underground utilities, including plumbing, electrical, gas, and cable TV. Once these utilities are in place, the trenches are filled in or backfilled, first with a layer of sand and the remainder with soil. Next, additional trenches are dug for the foundation itself. Any necessary formwork is constructed and reinforcing steel to strengthen the foundation is placed within the trench, as well as any foundation hardware intended to attach the wooden structure to the foundation. The foundation and slab are then placed in a two-pour process. The first pour fills the lower portion of the trenches to a point just below the bottom of the slab. A layer of sand is then placed across the entire footprint of the slab, followed by a plastic vapor barrier, another layer of sand, and then any specified reinforcing steel or mesh. Finally, the remaining foundation and slab concrete is placed, along with any remaining anchor or hold down bolts. After curing, the slab is then ready to receive the framed walls. Issues typically alleged involving the foundation and slab on grade system include moisture intrusion through the slab, slab or foundation cracking, missing or improperly placed hardware, and poorly compacted fill soil or trench backfill. Parties typically related to the slab or foundation system include the graders, the concrete subcontractor, the rough carpenter or framer, the soils engineer, the structural engineer, and the utility subcontractors. Windows. Windows and window related issues represent a significant portion of many construction defect claims. Many of these claims focus on the window installation process itself. While the installation process is rather straightforward, any deviation in materials or sequencing can lead to problems and potential water intrusion. The first step in the process is flashing the window. A strip of flashing paper is cut and placed along the bottom or sill of the window, followed by flashing paper along the sides or jams. A bead of sealant is placed on the back side of the window nailing flange, and the window is pressed into place and fastened. Then, a strip of flashing material is placed along the top or head of the window. A termination screed or weep screed is placed at the bottom of the wall and the building paper is then installed. Starting at the bottom of the wall, tucking under the existing window flashing, and then continuing up the wall, lapping each successive layer over the preceding layer in a weatherboard or shingling fashion. Once the building paper is in place, the final exterior finish material can then be installed. Issues typically alleged involving windows and window installation conditions include missing or incomplete sealant at nail fins, torn or damaged building paper or flashing, mislapped building paper or flashing, fastener penetrations through the building membrane, and blocked window weep holes. When the window installer fails to provide adequate sealant between the window nail flange and the flashing material, 
a potential avenue for water intrusion is created. When the lath or stucco subcontractor fails to properly lap his building paper under the sill flashing, a reverse lap condition is created, leading to potential water intrusion into the wall cavity. Once inside the wall, this moisture can lead to concealed mold growth. Often, this manifests as a stain on the wall baseboard or on the carpet tack strips. At the exterior, this moisture intrusion manifests as staining or deterioration of the building membrane. Often, an improperly placed fastener can penetrate the building paper or flashing material and cause significant water intrusion and damage. For a fastener to be effective, it must be driven fully into an underlying framing member. Window manufacturers provide windows with integral weep holes to allow water in the window track to effectively drain to the building exterior. Careless installation of stucco can block these weep holes and allow water to build in the sill track until it spills onto interior finish surfaces. Parties typically involved in window related issues include the rough carpenter or framer who is often responsible for installing the window, the lath and plaster subcontractor, the window manufacturer, the painter, the sheet metal subcontractor, and the architect. Roofs Typical roofing issues include missing head wall backing, torn or damaged felt underlayment, broken tiles, slipped tiles, nails through sheet metal flashings or other components, and missing or improperly installed anti-ponding assemblies. Broken or otherwise damaged concrete or clay roof tiles are one of the most commonly alleged roofing deficiencies. Foot traffic or manufacturing defects can often lead to broken roof tiles. When these tiles become displaced, the underlying felt can be damaged and exposed to sun and weather. Over time, water then migrates below the roof felt and causes deterioration to the roof sheathing and framing members. Water intrusion through improperly installed or inadequately sealed roof penetrations or flashing components is another typically alleged roofing condition. Once an avenue for moisture intrusion is created, water can enter into the structure, travel along pipes or framing members, and cause staining or other damage to finishes or structural elements. Parties typically involved in roofing related issues include the roofer, the sheet metal subcontractor, the rough carpenter or framer, the plumber, 
the HVAC or mechanical contractor, the lath and plaster contractor, and the architect. Showers and shower enclosures. Typically alleged shower issues include leaks at enclosures, tears in the membrane behind the tile, and blocked or plugged weep assemblies. Often, leaks at shower enclosures are the result of poorly installed or missing sealant at the interface between the shower enclosure frame extrusion and the shower pan or tile assembly. If this sealant is omitted, then water can escape from the enclosure and run along horizontal or vertical surfaces until it discharges onto adjacent finishes or into wall cavities. Typically, this water intrusion will manifest in obvious staining to finishes, but it can often be obscured within the wall cavity for extended periods of time, causing significant hidden damage. Another common cause of shower enclosure leaks is plugged or missing pan weep holes. During shower use, moisture typically migrates through the ceramic tile and is collected on a vapor barrier. This moisture then runs down the face of this barrier to the bottom of the tile assembly where it exits through a weep hole. If this weep hole is blocked in any manner, the moisture remains trapped in the wall cavity where it can deteriorate or damage finished materials or structural elements. Parties typically involved in shower related issues include the tile installer, the tub or shower manufacturer, the shower door enclosure installer, the plumber, the lath and plaster subcontractor, the rough carpenter, and the architect.